Okay, morning folks. I, uh, I can't see you all here, um, but maybe I will change my view and then I'll be able to see who's with us. So, uh, hmm. nope, not yet. Okay, so good morning. Um, Kathleen Warner, the director of Vermont Woodlands Association. Uh, we're glad to bring you this webinar today. Dave Wilcox, who is our watershed forester with Forest and Parks and also a VWA board member and landowner and tree farmer is gonna do this webinar on apple tree pruning and maintenance. Also with us is uh, Kate Forer, UVM uh, Extension. Kate, what is your title? Uh, hi everybody, Kate Forer, uh, I'm an Urban and Community Forestry Specialist with UVM Extension. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. So uh, we're going to turn this program over to Dave, who is actually sitting in his vehicle in the parking lot using uh, a hotspot on his cell phone to bring this yes. webinar today because he doesn't have internet at home. But if nothing else, we are resilient and we find ways to do what we need to do these days. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we would ask too, folks, that if um, while you're watching this webinar, please um, mute yourself so we don't have any background noise. And at the bottom of your screen where there is a chat window, um, please feel free to put questions in there that we can. Dave, do you want to do those halfway through? You want to look at questions or wait till the end? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop somewhere in the middle and just see if there are any any questions um just to uh break it up a little bit and so we don't have some questions that are out of context as we get too far down okay great and i see that <laughs> my sound is not very good here people can't hear me i'll turn it up a little but i'll turn it over to dave and he's the one you need to hear thanks. okay <laughs> great thanks kathleen um and Welcome folks. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and uh, doing what they need to do in this strange times. But um, yeah, I'm sitting here in the parking lot uh, where I have good cell coverage um, on, a, on a hot spot on my cell phone. So thanks to technology uh, that uh, at home it's raining and our internet doesn't work as well. So uh, we, we figured out how to, how to outsmart it. So um, we're going to talk about apple tree pruning today, um, a little bit about um, wild trees, a little bit about uh, trees that have been planted, and uh, I've got a few short videos trying to, normally this is, um, I've done many, many pruning workshops. Sometimes uh, they're, they're start with an inside PowerPoint, and then we go outside and we, we work on trees uh, after the PowerPoint, and other times I do them all outside without a PowerPoint and, and in two or three hours, uh, we have a hands-on you know, pruning lesson. So this is kind of a combination of PowerPoint and the video aspect um, that, that we took. Um, my, my daughters helped me out, uh, Meredith and Nora, and we have um, some videos to show. So hopefully they will, uh, they will show what we what we what we intend. So hopefully we get good questions, and folks um, can learn a lot about about apple tree uh, pruning and maintenance. So what we're going to cover: um, apple tree physiology, um, pruning and release. Uh, now we often talk about pruning. We don't always bring up uh, what release is. So we're going to learn about that. Um, there we go. A little bit of that little window that was in my way. Um, talk about why and when we prune, um, and then then get into the pruning cut, um, pruning principles, um, tools, and then get to questions. So you can see, uh, fortunate, uh, very fortunate to have property with a lot of apple trees. Um, we had a, a banner crop last year, as you can see in the middle picture. Um, we had one tree that had so many apples on it, it, it uh, one whole limb of it fell off uh, and it was really easy apple picking that uh, on that tree but we make cider with our apples we um, occasionally will make um, some some pies and things with our apples but 
Um, most of the pruning and maintenance that I do for apple trees is for wildlife, honestly. Um, to they're they're really important to wildlife. Um, and as a as a hunter and as a, a lover of venison, um, I like to eat. We like to eat. My whole family uh, like to eat uh, apples um, after the deer have processed it. So uh, talk about a little bit about apple tree physiology. Um, now to say apple trees need sunlight um, is to say that that fish need water. It's it's the most important thing um, for apple trees, and we we lose a lot of trees every year um, and have historically because Vermont was once very open and now it's it's um, covered with trees and and uh, a maturing forest. So uh, we have to take those remnant apple trees and and give them lots of maintenance to to survive. So you can see that. Um, trees are being overtaken and once they once they get that way the only way to keep them going is to release those trees um, and in some cases that means cutting down um, other opportunities for growing timber and forest and you have to decide what your priorities are whether it's wildlife or whether it's forest management and um, I, I think you know what we've uh, kind of settled on is a little bit of both um, where we don't and can't uh, maintain every single tree, but the ones that we do, um, we keep them out in the open, like the tree in the bottom left. Um, and unfortunately, there's a few that that we chose not to keep, um, and and they get overtaken. Um, and so you can't save them all, and you probably don't want to, uh, or might not want to, because um, it, it's a huge resource of um, it takes a lot of uh, resources, time, and energy to to maintain those trees. Um, and you put your energy into the better, healthier trees um, that are easier to maintain, um, and and that's more sustainable than uh, trying to keep every single tree. And and uh, so, and it's better to 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 prune them or keep them released and pruned. Although you'll see a tree in a little bit that that uh, we've we've released over you know, in, in periodically, not, not keeping it released, but we like to have trees that we can mow around like the tree in the bottom left corner. So um, it's easier that way. Um, you don't have to fight back the brush with, with saws and more time consuming activities. You can, uh, we can brush hog around them and, and keep the, and that grass is also diversity. We have more edge, we have great, great wildlife habitat. And also, um, keep in mind uh, keep in mind other aspects of, of habitat diversity. Um, the tree in the bottom right corner is a service berry, and those are bear claws, uh, claw marks on the tree where they climb the service berry to get the berries. They're they're a great wildlife tree, a soft mass tree like an apple tree. Um, and others in the in the picture in the top, beech, um, you know, uh, black cherry. Um, there's a snag left in there, and there, and in, in that little clearing there, there is a an old apple tree on the kind of on the right that that isn't going to make it. And uh, but we've chosen to um, release the other mass trees um, for for diversity in, in, in foregoing the apple tree. Um, so trees are. We talked about how how much they need sunlight. Um, you can see this tree. The base of this tree is way over by the. The base of that pine tree and luckily um, south is kind of straight away from us and a little bit to the right so this tree is really straight re reaching out to get to that sunlight around that that pine tree and somebody needs to go cut that pine tree down and um, and uh, hopefully that does happen um, can't get to everything but uh, that's on my list um, and and so here is a tree that uh, I want to talk about uh, you can see it barely in the background um, actually most of what you can see is a beech tree that's behind the apple tree, but this was an area that was cleared maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and, uh, there's an apple tree back there. I'm on the South, where the photos taken from the South side. Um, and then I'll, I've got a series of photos. So here's the first, um, you're starting to see that apple tree in the back there. It's got the branches that, that, that forked low to the ground, um, balsam fir. Uh, stuff that we're cutting is probably 10, 10 years old, um, 15, 10 to 12 years old, just came in after the last time we released the tree. Um, 
he was a little bit more cut. Um, and then we got that brush out of the way. Um, so you can see a little bit better the apple tree. And then um, actually the, the, the balsam, kind of a multi-use forest here. We're getting some forest products out uh, as well as releasing the apple tree. And I'm sorry, that's a dark photo, but um, every, um, you know, as the balsam mature, these, they're, well, I'll, I'll play a video and we'll talk about it. I don't want to give it all away. So um, I think the next shot here is video. So let's see how this works. Hey Dave, this is Kate chiming in. Uh, doesn't sound like the audio is working. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. I can hear it. Can you? You might want to unplug. Uh, if folks, yeah, folks can mention in the chat box if they can hear the audio. It sounds like there's some people who can and some people can't. I wonder if you unplug your headset for a second and just allow it to uh, to play. you hear me? Yeah. Yep, we can hear you fine. I'm wondering if uh, if you just play it on your laptop, if that might uh, okay. be able to transfer through the Zoom. Can I back up? Yeah, yep. most people cannot hear the audio. There's one who can. Okay. Uh, let's line that back up. And if you uh, go ahead and just try to play it, uh, make sure that the volume, the audio of your laptop is turned up. And let's try to... Try it that way. Let me. My my laptop is turned all the way up. No, I think it's all the way up. Yep, okay. great. Let's try it again, and and uh, this way it's not going through your headset. Okay. So forward to this, and we'll try it again. Is that any better? No sound. So maybe if folks on the line turn their audio up as well, that will help. Although I can't hear it and I'm turned all the way up. As I say, Dave, why don't you walk us through it? Do you mind? <laughs> yeah. Um. Let me start over. This is going to be tough. Ooh. Should I should I turn it? Okay. So this tree is basically, um, you know, the one we were looking at in the other in the other photos. We've got a a, a stand of balsam. Uh, and red maple, mixed wood growing in around it. Um, the south is the way I'm pointing in the video. So we've got good south exposure. Um, we want to make sure the south, that's the most important side. And uh, the balsam that we cut are, uh, they were about 45 years old. The trees are probably um, 60, 65 years old, the apple tree. Um, we lost a lot of trees in this area. Um, over the years because, um, frankly, we can't keep up with, with all of the, the pruning that's necessary to, to keep all of the trees going, but um, we have maybe 12 trees in this little group. Um, combination of, uh, we, we do leave some cover as well. Um, so it's, it's not just the apple trees, um, it's, it's a combination for the habitat, but um, for pruning the trees, we didn't really uh, because we had to release it, you wouldn't really want to go slow in the first year or two. Um, and 
really we just pruned off the, the the suckers that were in the bottom and then and then the deadwood there were a couple big um, pieces of deadwood in the tree and this is probably yeah there I'm pointing to the suckers that we took off um, then a couple of the big dead snags um, and this is probably the third time that I've released this tree in my lifetime with my my father and my brother um, and you know we've been able to keep it going uh, it's going to do much better now and hopefully um, what we'd like to be able to do is mow around it so we might do some um, a little bit of work to to make it easier to mow uh, smooth it out you know take some of the old stumps out and uh, so we can get around with our tractor but um, basically uh, that's the story it's unfortunate the sound didn't work um, hopefully the, the next couple videos are louder um, uh, I didn't realize it was going to be hard to hear. So, um, still rambling. Whoops. Uh, yeah, so there's the end of the video. Um, some of the rules to remember. Uh, Kate, can you still hear me now? Okay. The video uh, sound. Um, so let's, you're, you're doing okay. great. Go ahead. Yep. Um, so the, let me turn it back up. So the uh, the fact that apple trees need you know sunlight is is evident in in lots of old trees that you find out in the woods. You know they just they 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 can't uh, grow tall enough, fast enough, um, and they get out competed by you know the gray birch first, and then the red maple, and then the balsam, and then the spruce, um, and then the beech and sugar maple, and all the the, the part the the stories of succession. Um, and uh, I think I missed a couple, uh, some hints uh, that I talked about in the video. Only prune the deadwood out in the first first couple years. Um, the more room you can give the tree, the better. Now I talked about, uh, uh, you know, do we want to grow uh, habit or do we want to have apples and apple uh, habitat or forest products, timber, um, and that sort of thing? You have to decide. Um, you know, where your priorities are and, and, and if you have one or two trees, you're really going to work hard on saving them rather than if you have 25 trees and you can pick, you know, the ones that are, that are the most healthy that you can, um, uh, keep up with, so to speak. So, and then one, one more hint, uh, most of Vermont soils are, uh, acidic and they can, they can use lime, um, typically one and a half to two tons per, the, per acre if you had it tested. Um, and and I, I would say that you could go out and pretty safely put down lime around every tree and, and do it some good. Um, a lot of people want to go put fertilizer around the trees and, and that's really not what they need, um, especially when they've just been released. Um, they need to slowly come back uh, to get that root to shoot ratio. So um, if you do feel like um, fertilizing is necessary. You should always have a soil test done first. Um, but liming the liming the soil is a very um, uh, safe thing to do. Um, you know, eight to ten pounds per hundred square feet is about one and a half to two tons to the acre, and uh, will do, give the do the trees a lot of good. Um, so we're we're stepping away from release. Um, we're going to talk about pruning. Uh, why do we prune trees? Um, we prune them to maintain the health, um, improve tree structure and growth, uh, to, to focus that growth on the parts of the tree that we, we want to um, do better. Uh, and then, and also to reduce shade and wind resistance. Um, the wind resistance more of a, a for, for sometimes I give this talk before shade trees um, and that's kind of a holdover, but um, Reducing shade is, is uh, in an apple tree, we really want to reduce competition um, so that branches aren't shaded. So depending on how you look at it, we're, we're trying to get sunlight to all parts of the tree. And if there's duplicate branches or overlapping branches, we're going to remove those because um, they're, that's just basically internal shading within the tree. So, um, and, and the, the more, uh, open the tree is, uh, the better uh, chance you're going to have good flower development and then therefore fruit development, um, improved light penetration, um, 
and so on. So um, we prune in the dormant season, December to mid-April. Um, this this webinar is um, we is a result of uh, having to cancel a, a pruning workshop that was scheduled for a couple weeks ago um, in Berlin. And uh, I, I know eventually we'll get to that pruning workshop. That site is still there. Um, we've got permission from the town and the conservation commission was gonna, um, is still gonna hopefully work with us to uh, work on this little park that has a couple really nice apple trees um, and we will get to it. Um, but uh, you, you do it in the dormant season um, because they're stored energy. Um, the, the trees go into the fall, they put all their, their energy into the roots, store the carbohydrates. Um, and then in the spring, when, when the leaves come out and the buds break, that energy goes out to the tree. And if you, if you prune the tree in the dormant season and leave the branches that you want to develop the most, that's where that energy is gonna go. So, um, and, and most importantly, in the, in the, in the uh, dormant season, uh, when the weather's colder, we don't have those um, insect vectors and, and pathogens um, carrying disease and infection from tree to tree, from wound to wound. Um, and uh, it also, uh, if you do it in the spring, you've got a whole growing season for that wound to, to seal um, before the end uh, of, of the growing season. So, um, and, and a, a note, just, just after leaves come out um, and before leaves fall out should be avoided because that's when there's a whole lot of different things going on in the tree. Um, and uh, you don't wanna send the tree into shock or uh, kind of mess with the, the natural processes that are going on in the tree. Um, so the proper pruning cut is very important. Um, it, and we've learned a lot about this as, uh, as, as time has gone on about pruning. We used to prune trees like we were limiting them to go to the, the sawmill and make a flush cut, but, but now we, we, we understand more about the parts of the tree that are uh, intended to seal the wound when a when a, a branch think about a branch um, dying naturally because of lack of sunlight on a tree that branch falls off and you see that branch collar um, uh, identifies itself naturally so we want to mimic that when we do a pruning cut so we want to be um, circular and cross section um, the branch cop brokerage and the collar should be intact um, and you can see this picture shows the the branch bark ridge and the, and the branch collar, the swelling that kind of um, goes around the, the base of the branch. Um, and it's formed uh, with, with incremental uh, or annual growth. The, the, the branch grows, then the tree grows. The food only goes from the, from the leaves down to the roots. So the, the branch will grow and then when the stem gets um, resources it will grow so it gets this overlapping and intertwining um, growth pattern and it builds up that area right along the the branch collar um, and that's that's what identifies it um, as the extra the extra growth so we want to leave that because that's going to continue to grow because it's being um, provided for by the stem um, and in some of the research that we that has been done um, you can see the same kind of tree where you prune it flush and then you make a, the correct cut, you have a lot less decay and rot. Um, and basically that wound, you can see the, the wound starting to seal over that uh, where it says correct cut the end of that point. And that's what we want to see. Um, so here's a couple of examples of, you know, different trees have different uh, branching and, and uh, the one on the left, uh, I think it's a cherry tree. Um, the middle one is an ash, the one on the right, maybe an ash, it may be a Norway maple or something like that, but different, different species have different um, ways of growing uh, their, their branch collar and they look a little bit differently. So you gotta get, kinda gonna have to get used to it. Um, and so uh, the, the pruning cut that actually uh, removes that branch in that location uh, if, if it's a big branch, we want to um, take the weight off the end first. And that's the, the first cut is on the bottom, the second cut is on the top, and then the final cut is the one that really matters, that's close to the branch collar. So here's a, 
there's the first cut on the bottom, the second cut, and then the, the third and final cut. And I think I have a video. Here's a here's a picture of that um, ranch and, and a video. You know, so Dave, yes, Dave, it was suggested that if you reshare your screen, there will be an option to to share the screen sound in the bottom left. Okay. Um, hold on a minute. Do, say that again, Kathleen. No, so it says um, if you reshare your screen. So close it and open it. There should be an option to share the screen sound in the bottom left when you're selecting the apps to share. Yeah, share computer sound. Okay. So then so you have to, yeah. If you've done that, maybe it'll work this time. Thank you, uh, Stuart, for that suggestion. Now I can't go forward. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I know there are some questions in here what, that we'll get to when Dave comes to a stopping point. All right. So this is an example of the proper pruning cut. We've got the branch bark ridge here and the branch collar to here. So we want to be perpendicular to the branch, not necessarily parallel to the, to the stem that the branch is on. So I'm going to make this cut. Hopefully it's not too much. And also you can see that I've taken the weight off the branch first. So there's the proper pruning cut. All right. So I'm, I'm assuming that worked better. I got confirmation from my uh, folks at home that it did. So, um, Thank you for that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all figure this out together. Um, so, so now that we know um, how to prune and when to prune, um, the, comes down to which branches should be removed. Um, and there's a, there's a, the steps that you go through. The first step is um, dead, damaged, or diseased branches. Um, and then, uh, and, and those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, and branches with poor architecture, which are branches that are crossing or rubbing um, sprouts. And here's where sprouts and suckers come in um, and competing leaders where you, where you have, that's not so much an issue in apple trees because um, most of our apple trees are multiple, multiple leaders. Um, and then crossing branches that grow back, back into the crown or the center of the tree. And again, we don't, we don't want branches in the middle of the tree because there's really no sunlight in the middle of the tree and they're going to be be the dead branches that you're going to have to prune off anyway so um and then shaded branches or or multiple branches or branches that are um duplicate um so here's a tree a uh, video of a, of a tree um in our yard uh in berlin all right so this tree is uh, on our yard here in berlin uh it's about 25 to 30 years old it volunteer so it was grown from seed uh, a long time ago somebody threw an apple core out here and this tree grew uh, we did a lot of work in the, in the yard around it but it survived and I've been pruning it for about 15 years um, I would say lightly to moderately heavy uh, every year uh, it has a lot of suckers so it's a good tree to talk about suckers um, come on in and we'll, we'll look at the suckers um, Suckers are the same as water sprouts, uh, shoots, um, and basically you see where they come off the top of the of the branch. Um, and, and if you look at the other branches, they're kind of all over the place. Um, I did actually try uh, this or last summer to do a little bit of uh, when it was first growing to prune it off, but and I think it helped. Normally they're uh, two feet long, and this year they're only one foot long, so 
Uh, that's an option. Uh, it doesn't seem to hurt it. Doing it in the in the summer, not in the off season. And basically, it's real tedious, but you have to clip all of the the suckers off. And you can see these these are wounds from previous pruning. Um, and uh, there's not much you can do about it. I basically what 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 you're doing what this hat does is takes the energy instead of going the energy from the tree going to the sucker it goes to the parts of the tree that you want to grow which is the here's an older sucker that i didn't get in the last couple of years actually i'm going to take that whole branch right off because it's interior to the tree As you can see, there's a lot of little pruning to do. And when I get down closer to the ground where I can reach, I'll use my hand pruners. And I just try to get as close as I can. There's no branch collar or branch bark ridge or anything with this. It's just um, prune the sucker off. Okay, so um, can it, did everybody hear that one better, I'm assuming, hopefully? Yeah, David, Kate, that audio came through great. Okay, excellent. Um, so here's that same tree, uh, and, and I've got an, another video of uh, after it's done. Um, and you'll notice it doesn't look like a lot of brush that came out of this tree, and pictures really don't show the... The, there, it's a one-dimensional photo, but this tree is quite big. It's probably 25 feet uh, across the crown of this tree, both directions. So uh, the branches are going multiple ways, and, and it really looks like there's a there's still a lot to prune out of this tree, but um, it is fairly open. Um, I just wanted to point that out. That's what you don't get from from videos. But and all right, so we've got this tree finished now. Uh, it didn't take us very long. We pruned about, you can see the brush pile. It's important to keep the brush, uh, keep track of the brush you take out. You don't want to remove more than 25% uh, of the crown in any one pruning. Um, and you can see, you can see the suckers, the, the uh, suckers are gone. Uh, and then if you look at the edge of the, the farther out on the branch, You'll see, we didn't prune all these off. These are the spur shoots, and those are where the where the flowers and the apples will be. Um, you can actually see some leaves and remnants of apples. This tree was loaded last year with apples, as uh, as were many trees um, in Vermont. So uh, I know that uh, you could take more branches out of this tree, but because it's it's vigorous. Uh, and I worked on every branch trying to separate them. Uh, and there's always more. It's hard to walk away from a tree, but we've got more trees to prune. So we're going to call this one good. And again, I, I do this every year to this tree. So it's, it's a little different than uh, pruning a tree every 20 years uh, or every five years even. Uh, so I know that if I miss something this year, I'll, I'll get it next year. If that sucker, if I missed it and it turns into a little bit taller, a little bit longer, I'll, I'll still be able to get it. So um, on to the next tree. All right, so uh, got some rules that we learned in that video. Um, never remove more than 25% of the canopy at one time. And, and some people go as high as 30%. And, and I think um, with a vigorous tree, that's, that's probably fine. Um, and, but it's better to do it um, slowly over a couple years if, if you do have a lot of uh, corrective work to do. Um, and then just a, a little bit about branches. Um, if you have to remove more than 50% of the foliage of a branch, then um, you should remove the whole branch. Um, if you do a lot of little cuts, you're gonna, you're gonna um, cause a lot of sprouting and you're better off just making one cut on the whole branch. Um, and, and, and if you have that much to take off the branch, it's, it's probably, um, you probably don't need it anyways. Um, 
and uh, always maintain live branches on at least a third of a tree's total height. We don't want these little lollipops with just a, a little a little crown on them. Um, and then as a, as a general rule of thumb, faster growing trees can be pruned more than um, slower growing trees. Um, and I talked about pruning cuts before. Um, there, there's kind of two types, the thinning or, or removal cut, removes the whole branch, um, does less to upset the chemical balance. In that area of the tree, there's typically less sprouting. Um, some individuals sprout just um, a lot more than others, but um, if you can do five larger cuts rather than 25 smaller cuts, um, it's, it's better to do the five um, to the, for the, the response in the tree. Um, and then the, the, the other type of cut is a reducing or heading cut that removes the tip of the branch back to a lateral bud um, so that you can direct the, the growth of the tree in one direction or the other. And we, and we do that to sometimes divert branches that are pointing down towards the ground. We'll take the, the branch that's, that's growing down um, and, or, or to, to try to slow the, the upward growth of a, of a young tree um, and, and cut it at a lateral that, that will grow out, um, not towards the center of the tree. Um, they're usually smaller cuts. Um, and, and, and they change the apical dominance of the branch so it stimulates lateral growth. And basically what that, what that means is it prevents the branch from getting longer and it, and it, it uh, incentivizes the branch to grow out, to put lateral shoots on, which is what we want in an apple tree. We don't want a vertical tree like, an, like a maple. We want a, a horizontal tree. Most of the fruit grows on the, the branches that grow out. Um, that are that are not straight up and down. Um, and then uh, the other uh, um, uh, this this last bullet is for both types of pruning. Um, when you do when you take a branch off the, re the the remaining branch should be at least one third the diameter of the stem at the union. So it's called drop crotch pruning. So if you look at this this branch um, stub that uh, looks that goes off to the right, um, that uh, part that's left is one third the diameter of that branch, obviously. So, because this is just a much smaller branch. So, but that's what it, what it's, what the comparisons are. Um, if, if the branch that were remaining was smaller than one third of the diameter of the branch that you took off, then you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to leave it. Um, you'd have to go to the next union down to where there was a lateral that was one third the diameter. Um, and that's difficult to show um, in a video or a, in, in, a, in a PowerPoint like that. It's much easier to explain uh, when you're hanging on to the branch and showing people. Um, so let, I'm wondering if there's, if we should do questions now or we're uh, a little more than halfway through. Kate, do you have, or, or either Kate? Any questions? Well, there, Kate, you want to do that or you want me to do that? Kathleen, I'll let you do it if you, uh, I actually don't have it open right this second. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, there were a few questions back that you might have already uh, um, answered, but there's a question about why you mow around the tree. Okay. Well, um, the, the reason that we mow around the tree is simply to uh, prevent competition. From growing, um, most of the the herbaceous stuff and the and the small balsam and, and pine trees. Uh, if we mow every three years, we can keep that at bay so that we don't have to um, do it by hand. It's it's simply it's quicker with a tractor, um, and again, it, it creates uh, a different type of habitat in the woods. You know, when you have some grass, and again, you have to. You have to forego growing forest products when you do this, so it's kind of a multiple use uh, kind of thing, um, and uh, it it doesn't have to be with a mower. But if you don't mow it, you're going to have to somehow cut that stuff mechanically. It's just a it's a and is uh, about hundred thing. square feet the right area around one tree to mow. Um, well, if 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 you're going to mow. Well, you need a big enough area to, to get a tractor in to mow it. If we had a one tree by itself out in the woods, 
and you and you had difficulty getting there with a tractor um you're not going to get grass to grow under trees in the woods so we had enough we have enough open that the grass will grow and that grass also kind of keeps the competition down um and if if you had one tree that you were just opening up one tree in the woods i would i would probably say that doing it by hand is is the most efficient by the time you get a tractor all the way in there and there probably isn't that much um other than the the woody stuff to mow anyways uh because because you're not going to get typically grass to grow in the woods so this is a, a semi-open area anyways does that does that help to answer that question so um We'll see. There was also a question about pruning when flowering, and I do think that you address that. Yeah, yeah, you should. As soon as the buds break, you should um, try to try to stop the pruning process. And I know we're we're a little bit late. I mean, if the trees aren't aren't budding anywhere uh, around here, maybe the maple, the red maple might be starting to, but uh, I haven't seen any action in the in the apple trees at all um, okay. yet. So, but are we uh, pretty close to leaf emergence? Getting there. Uh, in set, well, it depends on where you're sitting in the state, too. Um, in central Vermont, I I think we've we've got a little ways to go, um, but uh, I'm still pruning trees um, and haven't seen anything, any indications that I should stop yet. So. Okay. Um, so then how, right. much, how much lime would you use per tree and how far away from the tree should the lime be spread? Good question. Um, I use, well, so if you had a, a tree, uh, you'd want to do the out to the, at least out to the drip line of the tree. Typically the, the, the roots go out to the drip line um, and you don't need to go too close to the stem, to the base of the tree. So a couple feet out from the base, out to the edge of the drip line. Um, and you know, if you if you had uh, a couple coffee cans, uh, maybe two for a small tree. Um, for a bigger tree, you'd probably use several. But uh, you know, we're not talking about bags and bags and bags of lime. It's it's uh, um, you know a couple coffee cans uh, um, and and eight to ten pounds. I don't know what a coffee can of lime weighs, but eight to ten pounds per. 100 square feet and then it take that area around the drip edge and you know roughly estimate how many square feet it is and put that much down um and and that can really be done anytime uh and it's it's uh pretty safe like i said it's safe to say that vermont soils are on the acidic side so um and you don't need to do it every year uh you know every couple years is 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 fine and if you really want to or, or want to know what the soil is doing, you know, what what the acidity is and what other nutrients might be lacking, you can get a soil test done um, pretty easily. NRCS can help with those. And another question about, um, does there have to be a main leader all the time or should the leader be pruned to get the fruit? Um, most most trees don't have a main leader. Um, some of the some of the newer style or type of tree, the the the, um, the newer varieties tend to be grown on a on a central leader with with um, lateral branches. Um, a lot of the older style trees had had several, two or three or four main um, limbs, um, kind of an open architecture of the tree. And it, it really, uh, whatever, whatever you can, um, whatever you have room for, <laughs> you know, depending on if you're out in the open and you've got all sorts of room, I don't necessarily, uh, it's hard to keep uh, the, the wild trees from getting real tall because they really need to be tall to, to survive, to have any chance in, in even a, a semi-forested setting. That height is where they get the sunlight. So they're going to be taller trees and, and they're, they may um, be kind of central, have a central leader, but out in the open, trees get round, and they go all different ways because they because they can. They have sunlight all around them. So, um, 
it's not critical to have the main leader. Um, but uh, if you can, if you can keep a tree smaller, it's easier to, it's easier to prune. It's easier to pick. Um, but I, I kind of go with what the, what the tree is telling me when, when it, uh, when it develops. Um, if, if, if it's a central leader, then, then I go with that. And if it has multiple leaders then I, I, I don't, you know, I go with those. So um, it's all about keeping the, keeping the crown open and um, not having all the branches go straight up and down, having some width to the tree uh, and uh, keeping the dead wood out and the diseased um, branches out. So Dave, can you comment on molding issues with some of the cuts and how to minimize or pre or prevent this? Um, the so so years ago, they 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 used to sell a lot of pruning paint, um, and they probably still do. Um, but the the your your best um, the best advice for pruning cuts is just to let it let it air out. Um, if you do it in the dormant season. Um, typically they'll, they'll dry up by the time the insect and the, and the stuff starts to grow, hopefully, so that, that it's not an issue. Um, and, uh, I, I recommend not using a, 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 a sealant, a wound sealant, um, just letting, letting it, uh, do its thing and, and grow and seal over naturally. Um, what, what I have heard about that is that it, you seal in as much as you seal out. So you may be keeping things in the tree that, that, um, that aren't, that are going to hurt the tree more than just letting it, letting it air dry and, and, and do its natural thing. So, um, I, I haven't seen issues with mold. There's, there's a, there's a, a fire blight is a disease that, that has a white powdery, um, substance that looks a little bit like mold, but, um, it's 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 not a mold. It's part of a fire blight. And that's one reason we really don't want to prune a tree um, when there are insects around. Is is it will spread fire blight um, very very quickly, um, and you can almost tell when trees are pruned in the summer because they all have fire blight. Um, so that's that's an important reason. If you do see this, um, I might have an example of it in the slideshow. If you see fire blight, you you want to take that, take those infected branches that you cut off the tree, take them away and burn them if you can. Um, because once the, when, once it gets warm and the insects are flying around, they'll bring that fire blight right back to the fresh wound that you had on the tree and spread it around and it'll be, it could be worse. So. So there are a lot more questions, Dave. I don't know how okay. you want to handle that. Well, I think I'm going to keep going. Um, and because we are going to run over one o'clock, but I, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all, but I don't, um, I want to get through the PowerPoint and then we can take questions for as long as, as folks can handle it. Okay. And if we okay. don't answer them all here, we can actually answer them maybe in a, in an online, like a recording or a document and post sure. it with this recording. Sure. That sounds good. Okay. All right. So, um, Talking about uh, dead, damaged, diseased trees. Um, there's an example of a broken, broken branch. A bear got up in this tree and uh, broke that branch. Uh, he left all sorts of other sign around, so I know it was a bear. Clawed on the tree and chewed on some branches. Um, bear can can uh, raise heck with trees. Um, they like them so much. Um, and then uh, once you get the dead, damaged, and diseased tr branches out, you look for weak inner branches, um, little things that, that are just uh, never going to amount to anything. They're in interior to the tree. Um, you take those off. Um, and then competing branches. Now, if you look at this tree, you can already see that I've pruned it, and then I left it like this for a year or two, and then I went back and, and actually took that branch that looks like an S. I took that out of that tree and that tree's doing really well. Um, but I did it over a couple years because um, if I had taken that off, this tree, all, the, all these branches went down to the same root system and it would have been way too much at once to prune out of this tree. So um, I did it slowly and I started with the interior branches, some of the weak branches, 
the broken branches. And then I, I, and then I had to step away from it because if I went too far, I was afraid I was going to kill it um, by shocking it too much. It, the, the roots and the shoots have a, have a kind of a ratio. And, and if there's, uh, if you go and cut the, 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 too many of the shoots, um, it'll send the tree into shock. Um, it's just like, uh, if you have a tree that doesn't have a lot of branches, you know, a, a, a tree that you released, one of the reasons why we don't prune it um, is we want to give, um, keep that balance um, because that tree is going to grow fast. Um, it, hopefully it's going to respawn and grow fast and maintain that root to shoot ratio. So, um, and, and those trees that aren't that vigorous can't, don't respond as quickly as, as really vigorous trees. Um, but I bet I, I bet I took, well, you know, 30 plus percent out of this tree in this pruning. Um, and again, again, it did fine. And I came back and took that S shaped branch out, but um, it was a lot. So here's another tree, um, a little video clip. Um, sorry about the, the quality. I wasn't able to move the high quality photos as, or videos as easily. And some of them came through and some of them didn't, but here's another video. All right, now we're going to prune a tree that is not a volunteer. So this is a tree that, that I planted uh, 22 years ago. It's a Red Delicious, and it has been pruned before, not anywhere near as heavily as the previous tree, but it's, it's not in bad shape. It's a very vigorous tree. Uh, this tree was loaded last year, has beautiful apples. Uh, and you can see it, it, it's a, a grafted tree. As, as most nursery trees are, because apple trees don't uh, reproduce true to their form, uh, so they have to be vegetated and propagated. And you can see there's quite a bit of interior branches in this tree um, that we're going to take out. Not a lot of sprouts like the other tree, so it's going to be a little different. It's going to be more uh, larger branches, and uh, there isn't any deadwood. I don't see any disease in this tree. We're going to, um, I'm going to pause the video and then prune the tree and then we'll resume and I'll talk about what we took out of the tree and we'll look at the brush that we took out of it. So. All right, so um, this is uh, another video uh, of the, to some of the larger cuts in this tree. So, so this tree is one that, that I kind of given a, a light haircut to in the last couple of years. And I realized that um, I was gonna have to get into it and get some of the bigger branches out. Um, so um, I think I have a video of this branch. Okay, so we're working on this tree. I've got one big branch I wanted to show that uh, I'm gonna remove. And this is a pretty good sized branch for this tree, but um, you can see there's there's multiple branches going the same way. This is a big, a nice big branch, um, but it's it's in between two others that I want to keep. So I'm going to cut uh, to take the weight off. I'm going to cut it right here. First, I'm going to make an undercut. And then I'm going to make the top cut. As that branch goes, it's going to go. Now you can see some space in the tree. Now I'm going to make the pruning cut right about there. Up a little bit. Yeah. Careful, so I hang on to the branch. I don't want it to tear. And there's our finished cut. And one less sprout. All right. Okay, now <clears throat> this is a picture of that tree after it was pruned. And again, um, the two dimensional photo 
doesn't show the 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 real spread of this tree and and how open the middle is um photos just don't you know they don't always show it very well but the next video will show the the brush we took out of the tree and uh, which is quite a bit um and uh here we go all right so we've got the tree pruned now you can see it still has its same basic size it looks fairly open inside We've got a lot of those interior branches. You can see the, the brush that we took out of it. We haven't moved any away yet. Um, it's hard to say what's 25%, but I, I think that's a pretty good haircut for this tree. Some of the branches were pretty large, like that one on the far side there. Um, but the old saying is you should be able to throw a cat through a tree when you're done. And uh, so that goes to tell you how, how open the tree needs to be. Brown on the outside keeps the sun from getting to the middle of the tree and, and that's where you get the, the, the dying branches and the dead branches. So um, come a little closer. You can see right into the interior of the tree here, it's fairly open. And uh, each branch is kind of released from the other branches. This tree didn't have the, the suckering that the other tree did. So that was pretty quick, um, but this tree will uh, do well this year, I'm sure. And uh, again, I, I prune these. I don't think I prune this tree every single year, but um, you know, I, uh, uh, some people would take more, but I like it the way it is right now. And uh, it's going to be healthier and definitely uh, provide a lot of fruit. Cut. Okay. So um, these are these are pictures of some. <clears throat> Some older trees that I have that we have on our on our place in Berlin, um, I I would say that at least the bottom right corner those those trees in that photo um, are close to 100 years old. They were they were planted by um, the farmer two or three ownerships ago, um, right around the in the 20s, um, and and they you know they're half hollow. Uh, they're they're got lots of uh, wounds of of time of of living on a windy hillside for for a hundred years, um, but they 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 keep going on, and I you know we keep pruning and um, taking out the dead wood. I I these are I would put these in the category of of easy to shock if you prune them too hard. Um, so I I kind of let them go away. And that top right corner is a tree picture. Is a tree that fell over, and um, three, five, five sprouts that came up off the top. I've pruned into five little mini trees, um, and uh, every year, every year they have fruit. They uh, still provide, uh, you know, apples and um, for all sorts of things out there. Uh, and so, you know, the, the the motto for for mature trees is don't give up. Uh, they can they can hang on a long time, um, and uh, it's not a bad idea always to to plant new trees. But um, I think we have around 140 trees, so uh, I've only planted maybe oh two or three trees um, in in the time we've been there, just because we have so many. So um, some of the tools that that I uh, that I use the most. Uh, a handsaw, like the in the bottom right hand corner, um, and the a lopper uh, up with a pole, and and I have two poles that I can put together, um, and hand pruners, pretty much the the the, the main tools that I use. Uh, loppers work good. Um, I do have a pair, but it, uh, it seems like I'm either using the saw or the or the pole lopper. Um, and then for some of the wild apple trees, we have a, a chainsaw pole pruner that has an extension or that extend extends has a 12 inch bar on it and uh it's made by steel it it's worth its weight in gold for those big chunks of dead wood that um would take you forever to cut off with a handsaw um the problem is the saw is it's it's fairly heavy and um not that much fun to use but it does work really well um so those are those are the tools that we use I want to thank uh, 
my helpers, Nora and Meredith, who were my videographers and, and uh, slowly they're learning how to prune. Pretty soon they're gonna send them out and they can do it their, their self, themselves. But uh, they were a big help. Um, and uh, uh, I guess now we'll, we'll try to get into the rest of the questions. So, um, Dave, there was a question about um, in a grove of several apple trees, should I treat them as individuals or as a grove? Um, well, when I, when I think of a, of a grove, I think of several individuals. Um, but if, but I've also seen where um, one, one area has multiple stems coming out of it, um, but more than likely it's one root system. So I would say that, that if you, if you look at a tree or at a, at a plant and you think it has one root system, think of it as an individual. And, but if you have several trees, but they're all pretty close together, but you think they have separate root systems, think of them as separate trees. Does that make, I, I, um, does that make sense the way I said that? So I, I basically try to, try to figure out, if, go by root systems. If you think they're far enough apart that they don't have the same root system, then they're separate trees. But if they're close enough, and I'm saying like a foot or, you know, most of those trees, uh, they, they, you know, what does it is the deer, <laughs> the, the trees grow up and the deer eat the buds and then the trees come out all misshapen and then after 10 or 15 years you finally get some branches that come through the the bonsai plant that the deer make and then when you when when they get older and those lower branches fall off um, it looks like two or three trees but it's really one really uh, misshapen stem essentially um and that one picture i had of that tree that the bear got into i think um i don't know actually i don't know if it was in this powerpoint but it had a a, a nest of uh browsed branches at the base of it um and a lot of the trees that i do uh, that that live uh the younger trees that are growing up in the in the pasture the old pasture have been butted back so, so many times by the deer that they they look like multiple trees, but it's really one root system. So um, I would say the root system is is where you would cut off the, is it the same tree or is it a separate tree? And the person who asked that question said your answer made sense. Okay, right. good. There's a question about a, a risk of lion tailing an apple tree if you're pruning all the suckers. How to ensure? How do you ensure you have good leaf cover in the immediate areas of the tree? Um, well, most of the suckers um, on that on that one tree, and, and a lot of the trees that I see with suckers, they're interior to the to the tree. So, um, as long as you're leaving the spur shoots that that start to grow as you get towards the sunlight part of the branch. Um, you shouldn't be lines tailing it and lines tailing it is just when when you have a really long branch with nothing on it except for the very end and and that uh, that's not really sustainable because the longer it gets the more it the more weight there is and it's it's uh, it doesn't have leaf area to keep it alive essentially so you're um, you're kind of starving that branch but um, if if you think that you're doing that, it's okay to, you can, you can leave suckers and you can rebuild a tree with suckers. You don't need 60 of them on a branch. You can leave one um, and let it, and let it grow and then trim it farther up. You gotta, you gotta make sure there's room in the tree for where you're gonna let this sucker go. Um, but uh, if you're worried about the, that, you can, you can, leave uh, a sucker here or there to kind of fill in part of the tree. But like I said, if you have, if you have um, all of the, the, the crown of the tree 
uh, fully developed, there's really not going to be any room interior to that tree for that. Uh, and you're not going to need that, that sprout, but you know, um, for example, if you had a, 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 a windstorm break off a branch or a bear come and break off a branch and you had to go back to where the, the, the last, um, you know, where if you're drop crotch pruning and you go back to the, the next biggest part of the stem and you really had to make a big cut and you have a hole in the tree, um, that's where uh, you could fill that in with a, with a sprout from, from another branch or from the same branch that right where that wound is that can fill in that part of the tree. It's just, the, um, they're, they're not as, as attached as well to the tree. Um, so they're likely to, to, to break, but, um, in many of those pictures of those older trees that I have, um, a lot of those crowns are simply old sprouts that have developed, um, and, and pruned out. So, or and been pruned in out, meaning laterally, into a, a, a new crown of a tree. So, um, you know, periodically you, you can uh, choose to leave a sprout and, and work with it. So is lime good for other fruit trees too? Um, I, would, I would tend to say yes, but I, I, um, it, I would wanna look at, um, maybe the the need requirements from other of other trees i know that that apple trees um they're uh you're really gonna you're gonna neutralize the soil and there might be other trees that that maybe do better on acidic soil so i, I don't really know the answer to that i would i would maybe look that up um but most other uh yeah i think you know most soils in vermont are are acidic enough that um that lime is going to benefit most most native species anyways um i don't know about about other um fruit trees you know that might be cultivars or or, or planted and is wood ash a substitute for lime um <laughs> that's a good question i i think it's i think it it, it does add, um, you know, it is basic, you know, uh, but I, I don't know that it's a, it's a straight substitute. Um, I often ask that question because we put lime ash down on our fields, but I believe that it's, it's added with something, um, but I'm not 100% sure. I should, probably should know the answer to that, but um, I, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one substitute. Um, and, but I don't know that you want to go dumping a ton of it on there to, to make up for that either. So I, I would, I would look into that. Is there a life expectancy for apple trees? Uh, <laughs> we have a small orchard that was assessed at 80 to a hundred years old back in 1995. Just curious how best to take care of them. Um, I don't, I don't know of a, of a, any tree having a, a life expectancy other than, you know, what nature um, deals it, you know, most, most of, most of what kills trees is windstorms and, and, uh, you know, abiotic factors. So uh, I think if you can keep the trees healthy through um, you know, pruning and, and well balanced so that they're not leaning one way or the other. It's just a, it's a, it's a physics thing. The law, the, the, um, if you can keep a tree balanced, it's more likely to stand up longer. Um, and when, when a tree has failure of a branch or portion of the tree and the, and it, and it breaks and tears and then it gets decay inside, there's really not much you can do with that other than, um, try to space out the branches so you don't have a lot of torque on those um, parts of the tree that, that might be weaker. Um, but really just balancing the tree out um, and trying to keep the tree uh, wind firm and, uh, and healthy is, is the best way to do it. I, I wouldn't give up uh, on any tree knowing what I've um, witnessed in my own backyard. Um, so, uh, it, but it's, you know, aesthetics aside, 
um, they can live a long time. They, they may not look uh, like your, your, your perfect orchard apple tree. I don't think I showed any trees in, in my slideshow that looked like they came out of an orchard. That's just not the way I prune. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they provide fruit. They, they, um, they're continuing on and, and, uh, and doing well. So, uh, I, I think, th I think those older trees are, are really kind of fun to work with and, and, uh, fun to watch. And I think it's just a matter of, of preparing them for wind and, and, uh, storms and things like that, that, that are really going to be probably what, what, what takes them out. Dave, how about steps to take where branches have been rubbing on each other or have crossed and kind of grown together? Mm -hmm. uh, um, what is what do you do? Um, pick the pick the strongest branch and leave it. Take the other one out. Um, if you have a, if you have a, oh, the sooner you can do it, the better. Obviously, there's really nothing you can do to a a wound that. Uh, or the result of a crossing branch, if, if they've touched and rubbed, um, you just kind of have to let it be and hope that it that it will um, maintain itself. Uh, you can you can cut it back from the end a little bit, so maybe it's not as long and so and and have so much leverage. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the best thing would be to have to to take them both out and have healthy branches that don't have any any uh, wounds or 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 anything like that but if you know obviously um you don't always have that choice so you have to pick the strongest branch to stay and uh do what you can to to balance it out you know kind of similar to the the, the older tree meth uh question of how do you maintain uh, the 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 tree the longest and that's where you provide a tree that will uh just hold up to the weather and uh and stay intact so trees seem to produce fruit in cycles. Last year was good, but the year before was poor. Is there anything you can do to make fruit bearing more consistent? Um, I I don't know that you can that you can in in the older varieties. I think the fruit um, patterns uh, is is kind of a holdback from the older varieties, which were, uh, which had that kind of cycle. I think the newer varieties that are propagated um, nowadays uh, are more consistent. They fruit every year. Um, but but I, I do know that um, if you can always keep the tree, uh, you know, if it's, it's at its healthiest point when it's, when it has you know, just just the, the right amount of, of open sunlight. Um, all the deadwood is gone. The 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 suckers are pruned off of it. It's going to have the best chance of um, having more fruit. And sometimes it's you know the the couple weeks when the trees are in blossom and and the 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 weather can have a lot to do with um, pollination. So it, it may not be uh, anything other than a, you know, a couple cold days of, of weather where the, the pollinators aren't doing their thing or um, the, the, the flowers get frosted or something like that. So um, keeping the tree as healthy as it can be it, um, it is about uh, the, the, the best medicine for uh, ensuring fruit. Um, and, and I don't get into uh, spraying trees or, uh, you know things thing i don't apply any any herbicide to any of my trees so um i i don't know if that has can have an effect on fruit i i kind of doubt it but um like i said I, that's not that wouldn't be a question i could answer but i keeping a tree healthy is is your best way to have it producing fruit in in years that that uh that are that it's going to so there's a there's a, a question about the branch collar. Somebody once told me that when pruning, it's good to just barely nick the branch collar to stimulate growth. I've never heard this before or since. Is there anything to it? And do you avoid any damage to the collar? 
I have not heard that. Um, and, and I avoid any damage to the root collar. Um, and I, I guess I would, I would tend to err on the, I tell people err on the side of a little bit farther out if you're not exactly sure where the branch collar is. So I would say that, uh, you know, keeping it intact is important. Um, so, uh, that, that's, a. um, yeah, that's, that, I don't know about that, but I, I would say that it's, it's not recommended, um, from, from everything that I've seen, you know, seen and heard. And, and there's a question about, I know you addressed older trees. How do you know when to give up on older trees mm -hmm. that have not been taken care of? Um, I have 10 in an east face, east facing field. Um, I can tell they had been heavily pruned, but not in the last 15 years. The field is wet, mostly ferns and sedges, and the apple trees themselves are heavily lichened. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. I, that might be a, a, a site because of the wetness that, um, you know, they're not doing well because they're not able to, um, you know, get what they need from the, from the soil. And, um, uh, maybe it's a oxygen thing because of the water. Um, they might, it might just be a, a site situation there where the trees are are unhealthy because of that so um there's really no uh you know point that i know of to say you know throw in the towel because you know what else is going to be there um un unless you're you're having to release them by cutting down um species that would that would do better there um maybe uh you know that that's when when we talking about forest management for a minute um, and and site suitability. Not every tree is the right tree for every situation, and and this might be a place where the apple trees um, just happen to land uh, and 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 survive because nothing else was there, and they're not doing very well either, um, or they're uh, cultivated that way because they want people wanted apple trees there um and and cut we're cutting down you know red maple or or uh brown at black ash or um balsam firs or spruce or something that would do may do better on this wetter site um and it's time to to realize well i'm not growing the what what would be the natural community here not that not that apple trees are ever really a natural community and in uh, North America because they weren't native. Um, but if, if they're if they're really struggling, um, it sounds like it, it's as much the site as it is the, the trees themselves. So um, that that's a tough that's a tough situation. And then again, you don't want to give up on on uh, on apple trees because of the you know the, the, the diversity in the, in the wildlife habitat. So um, and I don't know of any uh, soil amendments you can do um you know uh in that situation so i and and i have uh, have and ha have seen plenty of apple trees that that grew years ago that just were in a really uh tough situation tough site site wise and and didn't really amount to much and uh you know are petering out uh long before they normally would just because they're they they can't maintain their size oh david do apple trees like bone meal and if so how much and when would you apply it boy I, that's that's um i i don't know the answer to that question um that would be a that would probably be a, a agway type question honestly i uh have never um use bone meal um so i i don't really know what 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 it what the benefit of it is um whether it's uh yeah what kind of nutrient it, it supplies and uh, and that sort of thing so i i can't really answer that one okay um have you noticed any increase with sap sucker sap sucker damage on pruned apple trees um not 
not what I thought was related to the pruning. Um, it seems like uh, this year, actually, that one that one apple tree, um, the the bigger one in the in the in the yard um, had sap sucker damage in it this year, and I'd never noticed it before. Um, and I had we had a, a mountain ash that was killed by sap sucker uh, a couple of years ago, well, two years ago. So I wonder if if that wasn't um, an individual uh, just looking for for uh, a meal. So I you know I, I don't know that it was the tree as much as it was the sap sucker um, that was that had you know caused it. So uh, I don't think pruning um, has anything to to do with the sap sucker. You know that they're. Uh, looking for trees that are, are, you know, what they do is they, they make a hole and the hole fills up with sap and the insects come to it and the sap sucker comes back and gets the insect. So anything that has sap will, will do for them. Some trees they love and they're riddled with sap sucker holes and other trees of the same species are completely free of it. So um, I've never seen it associated with pruning. Um, but you know, as in, as individual birds move around, um, that would certainly have an effect on on where there's new sap sucker damage. And I, I I think that's what happened to this tree. I think that that sap sucker um, I'd never seen it before, and and that that mountain ash lived there for twelve years was just fine, and then this sap sucker came and just looked like it shot it with buckshot fourteen times, and it, it, the tree died. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I can't make that connection. There's a, a couple more questions here. I don't know how far we want to go. Um, these will all be in the recording that we post if we answer them. Okay. Maybe take a take a few more minutes. Um, sure. So branches that have a lichen covering on them should those be pruned? No, no. They they um, disregard the lichen um, and and treat the branch. Uh, just as it would be, you know, as you would treat it without the lichen. Um, although uh, sometimes lichen can be an indicator of a dead branch, um, and it and it might not be the same kind of lichen as on a, that's on a live branch. But um, and they can make it in, difficult to determine if a branch is how healthy a branch is. So for for purposes of of determining the health and the and the the vigor of the branch, you know the lichen, you know, kind of gets in the way of that. So you have to look at it closely. But the lichen in itself, if the branch is healthy, is not going to hurt anything. So um, and and some some trees in some areas are loaded with lichens, um, and typically they're slower growing, um, less vigorous trees, um, whereas the the more vigorous trees uh, don't have as much lichen. I think just because they're younger, the branches are are uh, are newer, and it takes a while for that lichen to build up. But um, but the lichen in itself isn't going to interfere with the, the with the branch. Is there like a minimum hours of sunshine for trees you release in the forest? <clears throat> um. I, I don't I don't I've never heard of a minimum number of hours um, but what I have uh, seen from uh, Vermont and New Hampshire fish and game departments fish and wildlife departments is that they recommend um, if you start at the base of the apple tree and, and look south you should have a 45 degree clear horizon so if you looked 45 degrees out you should not be able to see any treetops. And that's that's a long ways um, if you have trees around that are of any size. So focusing on the south side is the key. Um, and as much as you can give it to the east and the west, uh, the better. Um, but uh, I would say a lot of it has to do, you know, so I don't know of the of the of the number of hours of sunlight or um, you know, uh, heating degree days or whatever they call the the, the way they measure 
um, solar degrees or whatever, or solar degree days, whatever it is. Um, but the more the more sunlight you can give it, the better, and you can never give it too much. <laughs> so uh, again, it comes back to deciding uh, how much time you have, what your resources are, what your goals for that area are, whether it's forest management or habitat or diversity or a combination of things, picking those healthiest trees. Um, and get, I'd, rather, I'd rather have three trees have a ton of room than five trees have a little bit of room, um, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I think uh, that's, how I would, that's how I would look at it. And, and I think that's kind of what we've done on our property is pick the trees that we think are gonna do well, give them a whole lot of sun and mow around them and the ones that are farther back in the woods, um, you know, you have to kind of give them up. But uh, it's easier when you have more trees around to, to play with. So um, I hope that answers the question. And here's a question on drop crotch pruning for clarity. You take the big branch and keep the one that is at least a third the diameter of what you pruned off. So in other words, you don't have to take the one that is one third diameter and keep the big one. Yes, you can, you can cut off the big one as long as the lateral is one third the diameter of the union below the, the intersection. In my example, in, and in my example, I cut the small side, but, but I really, should have been should have had an example where I cut the big side, and I think that's exactly what this what this question is about. So that's a that's a very observant question. <laughs> so thank you for the opportunity to clarify that. Yeah. So and and John also gave us an FYI on bone meal that's used to provide phosphorus and calcium to plants. The calcium does the same thing as lime. Phosphorus is basically fertilizer, which it seems you are not recommending. Right, I would I, I would hesitate to do that without a, some kind of a soil test, and and if, and and also with with trees that are low vigor, I would hesitate to fertilize them um, until they've come back to a, a more vigorous state, because growing a bunch of leaves may be the last thing that. Uh, a really weak uh, root system wants to do. Do you recommend oh. cleaning and sterilizing pruners when you're going from one location to another, like a different farm? Yes, that that's uh, that's that's a very good question, and thank you for that. I I didn't cover it. Um, I I typically do, um, but <clears throat> what when whenever we have, um, whenever you're going from one tree to the next, if you know that that tree is diseased, um, try to do the diseased trees last if you can, first, the first step. Um, and in between trees and in between trees on infected, in between cuts on infected trees, use Lysol and spray your, your saw blade or your loppers. Um, and, and that will kill uh, most of, 99% of the bacteria that will spread from tree to tree. Um, and definitely, if you go from, uh, you know, one property to the next, uh, uh, that's, that's uh, very important so that you don't spread um, diseases, you know, long distances. Um, so, and, and, and really all you need is, is a can of Lysol in, the, in, in your um, pruning bag or bucket or whatever you use and uh, spray the tool down. And I, I should have used that, um, but I, uh, those tre I did, haven't had any um, diseases on those trees and, and uh, didn't, didn't utilize the Lysol. So, but thank you for that question. So David, we're at 1.32. I think we kind of need to make a yep. call here. Yep, I'm, I'm, that end, makes sense. Can I can I give folks your email in case they have direct questions? Absolutely. David.wilcox at vermont.gov. Okay. Yes. We'll send that out here. And um, 
we can in include that in anything we post. There are tons of kudos here for you. Wonderful job. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was very, very informative. All right. Well, I, I'm glad that uh, we got the technology worked out last minute. And uh, I, I apologize we didn't get the sound, but hey, we learn every time, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you to those who helped us do that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And